Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm filming my September book haul and you can see it's quite a massive one. There were so many good books that came out this month and I was very tempted. I think this has been quite a record month for book releases in fact because so many were delayed being published because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So there was a lot to really tempt me in September. But I also, besides buying sort of new out books, I also bought some to sort of uh, add to some of my collections that I'm building. So I'm going to take you through all of the books that I've got in September. So first off, I got two titles to add to my P.D. James collection. I got An Unsuitable Job for a Woman by P.D. James and then A Mind to Murder. I love P.D. James. She's such a great writer um, and her mysteries are fantastic. She's not as cosy as Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers or those sort of golden age crime writers. Her murders do tend to be a bit more gruesome, which I don't normally like, but she just is such a good writer that I actually really enjoy these. And I wouldn't say that they're still not as graphic as a lot of modern crime books. So I do enjoy them a lot and I used to read my mum's old copies when I was a teenager and we lived on Long Island but we didn't bring those books with us when we moved so I haven't actually owned P.D. James books for a while so I was really delighted that they started being re-released with these gorgeous covers by Angela Harding who's one of my favourite illustrators and um, and I want to get all of the books in the P.D. James series. An Unsuitable Job for a Woman features Cordelia Gray, which is her sort of female private investigator. There aren't so many uh, books in the Cordelia Gray series, but I do still enjoy them. I think mainly because it is a woman who's the main character in them. And An Unsuitable Job for a Woman is the first in those books. And then her series that she's most famous for is the Adam Dalgleish series. And A Mind to Murder is one of the books that feature him. He's a detective but also a poet and a really great character. So I really enjoy the books that feature Adam Dalgleish as well and I wanted to just showcase this one because it has such a gorgeous autumnal cover. So I thought you'd like to see that. So I was really happy to add these two to my P.D. James collection. And then I also got some books in the new British Library Women Writers series. And this was one of the ones I was most excited to get. It's Dangerous Ages by Rose McCauley. And this sounds really interesting. It's about, I think, three different generations of women in the same family. And they're all at sort of dangerous ages. Ages. I think one is 33, the other's 43, and then 63 is the age of the grandmother. And I'm actually 33, I'm just about to turn 34 in October. So that's a reason that I want to read this book before my, 31st, uh, my 34th birthday because I think that's quite fun. <laughs> I don't think 33 has been a particularly dangerous age for me, I have to say. But I'm really enjoying the title so far in this series, so I'm looking forward to moving on and reading this one. And then I got a new Slightly Foxed book at the start of the month, which was really exciting. This is Ons and Rebels by Jessica Mitford. It came with a lovely little bookmark too. I love the Slightly Foxed editions. They're these lovely pocket-sized um, cloth-bound hardbacks that are beautiful to read. I'm a huge fan of the writer Nancy Mitford and it's well known that she borrowed a lot from her own rather eccentric family when she wrote her wonderful books like The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate. Jessica Mitford is one of Nancy Mitford's sisters 
and this is her memoir where she gets to tell her side of the story a bit and I'm just really glad to have such a beautiful edition of this book and I can't wait to read it. Then I got a new Penguin Cloth Bound Thomas Hardy book, which I'm so excited about. I raved about reading Tess of the D'Urbervilles over the summer. It was such a joy to come back to that book, and I haven't read it since I was a teenager. And it's the same with Far From the Madding Crowd. I'm really looking forward to rereading this. I really, really loved this when I read it ages ago, and so I'm excited to return to it now but I wanted a nice edition of it and I got the penguin cloth bound which is lovely, I love the bees that feature on the cover so I'm looking forward to reading this one and then I mentioned this book in my video about good autumn reads but I wanted to highlight it here too because I got this in September and it's a poem for every autumn day and this is a collection that's uh, taken from the Nature Poem for Every Day of the Year anthology collection and there's also a Nature Poem for Every Night of the Year and I have those two collections already but I still couldn't resist getting the little autumn edition of it. I like that it's quite light, it's easier for me to read in bed and it's also just so attractive. I mean again that's just such a stunning stunning cover. So yes I couldn't resist it. And then this is a book that was sent to me um, from Virago. It's What Are You Going Through by Sigrid Nanez. And coincidentally, I'd actually just finished reading The Friend by Sigrid, Sigrid Nanez because my mum and I do a tiny little book club with our neighbour and she'd suggested, she'd suggested that we read The Friend with her. So both my mum and I read The Friend in September. I'll be talking about that more when I do my September reading wrap up. But I had enjoyed The Friend and then it was a nice surprise when Virago sent me this in the post. And this is a novel as well. Um, it's about a woman I, I think whose friend um, has decided that they want to commit suicide. I think they're ill and they want to commit a suicide. And yes, it says, a woman visits a friend who is dying of cancer. Brilliant and stubborn, her friend makes a momentous request. She wishes to end her life on her own terms and she wants the narrator's help. Stricken, she agrees. I promise, says the friend, to make it as much fun as possible. So a bit of a dark but interesting premise to this one, I think, and I was really impressed by Nanez's writing in The Friend, so I'm curious to read this one too. And then I was really excited to get this book, Sunset Song, by Lewis Grassic Gibbon, and this is meant to be a brilliant sort of Scottish masterpiece, a great example of Scottish literature and I have to admit I was partly drawn to the cover which is again absolutely stunning but this is also a really interesting sounding novel. It's set just before the outbreak of World War One, and it's about a young Scottish woman who has a real um, strong tie to the countryside and she decides to stay in her beloved countryside of Scotland but then of course war breaks out and everything changes. So it sounds really good, I haven't started it yet but I'm really hoping that I will enjoy it and I do love to read about Scotland in the autumn. <laughs> like I've said before, there's something about Scotland that makes me feel really autumnal so I think I'm going to enjoy reading this book very soon. 
And then I couldn't resist this one either. It's called A Short History of the World According to Sheep by Sally Coulthard. And the author, I think, is a Yorkshire lass, <laughs> as they say. So she's from Yorkshire, which is really nice. And there are sheep in a field quite near to where I live. And I've loved, I've loved observing them all through the summer. And I've become a lot more interested in sheep, which I know sounds <laughs> maybe a bit bizarre, but they surprise me by how curious they are. They really look up when you go near them and sort of study you. And they're just quite adorable too. So funnily enough, I do actually want to learn a bit more about sheep, <laughs> which is why I picked up this book. And it just sounds really interesting. I mean, the whole wool industry is so important within Britain's history and especially the history of the north of Britain. So I'm sure that this is going to be a really interesting read, not just about sheep, but also a bit about the wider history, I think, of England. So yes, I'm really looking forward to reading this. It's great to support a local Yorkshire author too. And then I also got The Wild Silence by Raina Wynne, which is the follow-up to The Salt Pass, which I thought was brilliant and so many people loved. And I'm really curious to read this one by her now. I've heard good things, so I'm hoping it will live up to expectations. We'll have to see. But again, I just absolutely love the cover. I think this is by Angela Harding too. I'm pretty sure that she did it. Yes, it is. It's Angela Harding as well. And I think that's just absolutely stunning. And Raynor Wynn's such an amazing writer. So this was a non-fiction purchase of mine, another one. And then yet another one is Vesper Flights by Helen MacDonald, who wrote H is for Hawk, um, another amazing book. This is a collection of essays, I think, so I'm really looking forward to dipping into it. And I haven't read any yet, but I'm really looking forward to it um, because I think, again, that she's just a really wonderful writer and it's exciting to have a new book by her out again now. So I definitely couldn't resist that one. And then this was another book that was sent to me. This was sent by Pam McMillan, and it's a poetry anthology called She Will Soar by Anna Sampson. It says, Bright Brave Poems of Freedom by Women. I have the first um, poetry anthology that Anna Sampson did called She Is Fierce, and I absolutely adore that poetry anthology. It's got so many of my favourite poets in it, but it also introduced me to a lot of new female poets which was really great and so I was really thrilled to get this follow-up sort of companion volume to the first one and it looks to be very much the same there are some poets that I know really well in here um, like Emily Dickinson, Christina Rossetti but there are also some new to me poets and some more modern poets as well like um, Mary Jean Chan I think is in here. Yes, Mary Jean Chan is featured in this book. So I like that it's a mix of well-known sort of classic female poets as well as more contemporary poets too. So I think that this will introduce me to some really great writing which is wonderful and it's just a really beautiful book too. It's just, I think it's really been very well done and it looks great next to She is Fierce too. So I'm really thrilled to get this. Sorry, that there's a pile of the books falling to the ground. There are there are a lot. <laughs> I'm piling them up on a chair by me and a bit of a disaster, but they're not damaged, so <laughs> that's all right. Um, this book was sent to me from Dialogue Books, Reproduction by Ian Williams, and I'm really curious to read this one. I think this one is done really well in Canada. Lately, dialogue books seem to be republishing quite a bit of Canadian literature, which, or, well, publishing for the first time. I think 
this has been out in Canada for a while already and it's doing well, but it's just been published in um, Britain by Dialogue Books. And it sounds really interesting. It says, when their ailing mothers are assigned the same hospital room, an odd couple relationship blooms between Edgar and Felicia, ripe with miscommunications and reprisals for perceived and real offences that have some unexpected results. Fast forward, their son Armistice is a teenager fixated on a variety of get-rich-quick schemes that are as comic as they are indicative of the immigrant son's fear of falling through the cracks. When Edgar re-enters Felicia's life at a typically inopportune moment, the book's exhilarating final act is set in motion and reproduction is revealed. So I'm definitely interested. It sounds like it should be hopefully a bit of a page turner. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one too. And then I was really excited to get this book, which is Moonflower Murders by Anthony Horowitz. I'd loved the first book in the series, which was called Magpie Murders. So I was really looking forward to reading this one and it didn't disappoint. I'll talk more about it in my reading wrap up for September, which will be coming out soon. But suffice to say, I really enjoyed this one. It's quite a page turning mystery, even though it's quite big, I really got through it. It features Susan, the sort of crime-solving <laughs> publisher or ex-publisher as she is in this book, and it's just really fun. There's a lot to enjoy if you're a fan of sort of golden age crime mysteries. Anthony Horowitz clearly is, and he throws a lot of sort of nuggets to that in a way, and I love the way that his books. There's always a book within a book, which I think is quite a clever structure to this, and he always drops lots of clues along the way as to the identity of the killer. But it's just really well done, and yeah, a really fun, entertaining read, so I enjoyed that. And then I also got this book, Richard Osman's The Thursday Murder Club. And I'd heard a lot of good things, so I was really anxious to read this one. I have to admit I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. It is quite funny, but the actual mystery I thought was pretty far-fetched. And there were issues with the ending for me. I didn't really like how it was all solved and the solution to the crimes. I just thought that was really far-fetched. So I was a bit disappointed, especially as I really liked the idea of the book. Um, it has quite a clever premise and it's partly inspired by the Miss Marple short stories where Miss Marple and her friends gather around the fire, I think on Tuesday evenings it is in those stories, and they tell each other unsolved crimes and of course Miss Marple is always able to solve them by the end. And this is set in a sort of old people's retirement village and um, a group of these elderly friends gather together every Thursday and they look through old, well, cold case files, as, as they're called, and they try to solve past cases. But then a murder happens and they have a fresh new case to try to solve. Now it was quite funny and I enjoyed it and I think this would translate really well to TV in fact and I think there maybe is a TV show in the works already and it's obviously very rare for me to feel that I'd actually enjoy a TV show more than the book itself, I mean it's almost invariably the other way around but funnily enough in this instance I actually could see myself enjoying a TV show of it much more than I enjoyed the book but it was still quite a fun read. And then a few people actually contacted me on Instagram saying, did you know that this book came out? And thank you to those of you who did that. Sorry, I can't remember your names, but I absolutely love this edition of Pride and Prejudice. It's the complete novel, but included in it, and I have one to show you, 
are these sort of reproductions of all the letters that are mentioned in the books and it's really sweet they're sort of all folded up inside I don't know if you can see that and the way they're done is absolutely stunning the paper's made to look quite old I think the handwriting is just spot on this is Caroline Bingley's note to Jane Bennett and I just absolutely adore it. And as you go through, these letters are in these little pockets inside that you can take out. And I think they're just, they're just fantastic. If you love Jane Austen like I do, then I think you would love this book. It's curated by Barbara Heller. And I think it's just such a brilliant idea. I haven't unfolded all of them yet, but I can't wait to look at Mr. Darcy's letter to Elizabeth, for instance. That will be fabulous. And some of them, oh, I haven't seen what this is yet. Let me see. Oh, it looks like an old sort of fashion plate. Isn't that lovely? I wonder if this is around the Netherfield ball sort of scene. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's a letter from, oh, it's a letter to Harriet from Lydia Bennett. Oh, you will laugh when you know where I am gone. Oh goodness, it's quite far in the book. I think that's fabulous. She's written it within a sort of old fashion pamphlet. That's amazing. So yeah, I mean, I'm just going to adore looking at every letter and I think it's so fun because Pride and Prejudice is a novel full of letters, very important letters. And I think that's so fun that you get them um, scattered through, you're able to read them. And she even like has little spelling mistakes that she crosses out and things in it. I think it's so clever, I absolutely adore it. So yes, thank you to the people on Instagram who alerted me to this. I think it's amazing. I love it. And I think there are only quite a few, I think it's sort of limited edition. So um, yeah, it's a good one to sort of get on with ordering if you do want it. But yeah, I'm so thrilled with it. I can't wait to look at all of it properly. I think it's so lovely. Anyway, those are the books that I got in September that I thought you would enjoy knowing about too. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations do let me know what books you bought in September are there any that you think I might enjoy did you get any the same I'd love to know but please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking my face which pops up somewhere around here but I'll be back again very soon for another video take care bye